Hello everyone, this is your 5N. Welcome to the Cobra Master Tutorial Review. And today, so we'll be looking at the 1987 release by Hasbro of the G.I. Joe Vehicle and Action Figure Review. And today's Vehicle and Action Figure Review, we'll be looking at the Cobra Mamba and its pilot, the Gyro Viper. Now, I got this entire set here for $23 minus the box and the instruction manual which is a very good deal, that's not including the shipping yet very good deal to get the entire set of the Cobra Mamba here because it's quite difficult to find a Cobra Mamba with well, the rotor blades is the most common problem that you find in eBay because it tends to droop down quite a lot and it warps down due to sunlight, heat or storage and it bends the rotor blades all the way down sometimes when you have to find a Cobra Mamba sometimes the rotor blade is missing or the missiles are missing and even to find a Gyro Viper complete with the helmet and a file card is quite difficult as well so $23 for this entire set is a really good deal so without further ado let's start our review on the Gyro Viper so be right back and we're back and this time we'll take a look at the Gyro Viper but first things first, let's take a look at the file card that came along with it here we have a nice little file card of the Gyro Viper which you can actually find it at the back portion of the Cobra Mamba's packaging box which you have to cut out the file card as indicated at the edge of the cutout lines itself as you can see now but the previous owner actually cut out more than that which is very nice, very neat and clean now what's interesting that I found out is that okay here it's stated at 1987 Hasbro Incorporated but it's actually made in Hong Kong for the toy itself but the whole packaging is actually printed in USA it's quite interesting because I would thought that it's made in China instead like most of the toys we have now in the top section that's stated code name Jaro Viper here's what's interesting Mamba Driver rather than Mamba Pilot not too sure that's deliberate or a typo here we got a nicer image of the gyro viper inside piloting the cobra mamba now in the write-up there stated the coordination necessary to pilot a helicopter is akin to operating a yo-yo with your left hand while spinning a pie plate on the tip of your right index finger while you're balancing full glasses of water on top of your feet Piloting an attack helicopter in combat is like doing all of that while riding a 12-point bug through the woods in the middle of hunting season. Mamba pilots have to be pretty nervy just to get through the training program. Wow, the complexity on piloting a Cobra Mamba is like a disaster waiting to happen. Why would anyone want to design such a helicopter? It's just beyond me. Now, at the bottom, someone quoted, Attack helicopters come in two varieties, bigger, heavily armored, slower ones, and smaller, faster ones with no armor at all. Mambas fall into the later category. The Gyro Vipers tend to be fast, decisive tankers with self-assured confidence in their flying skills, and they don't look back. Very nice. Now at the back portion of the card is part of the card box itself, which is, well, tape with the masking tape itself. Not too sure what happened. Don't want to question, don't want to know. So I'm going to put this on one side, let's take a look at the Gyro Viper's accessory. Now he only comes with one accessory, which is his helmet, made of a red plastic material color, dark red actually, as you can see there, and the visor is painted in silver. And that's about it, that's all the paint job there is. But there is a bit of details there, on the side of the helmet, as you can see the strap goes all the way to the, to the back, and to the other side, very nice. On the top there, there's a small little toggle probably to unwind the visor itself or lift it open now the problem with the helmet itself is because it's a bit too tight to fit it onto the figure you can fit it in it's just that when you try to pull it out you also end up scraping the figure's nose the paint job tends to scrape off so it's really a, not a good design there it's a bit too tight but the helmet looks alright it's very simplistic, nothing that special plus the fact that he only has the helmet and doesn't have a pistol or a knife anyway considering the figure actually has molding on the, the ties 
and the lower legs with the pistol holster and the knife sheath but we'll go into that details of the mode later now let's take a look at the Vegas paint job now majority of the parts as you see here it's not painted at all they are pure beige plastic material color but some of the details has been painted the head however is made of a purple plastic material color as you can see that the exposed face has been painted with flesh tone skin the eyebrows and the eyes has been painted in black as you can see closer inspection showed that the nose itself is a bit chipped off thanks to the helmet there the shoulder pads has been painted in purple the straps here painted in silver that goes all the way to the back tubings has been painted in red from the arms to the back and all the way to the legs the gloves has been painted in brown gun holster has been painted in brown as well so that's the straps as well the lower section of the legs the straps has been painted in brown the knife sheath as well and the boots here on one side of the tie just like while weasel will have some sort of a I would assume a map placed onto the tie itself maybe I'm not too sure now the paint job is actually quite nicely done with the details let's take a look at the figure's mold now everything you see on the onto this figure for the gyro viper itself all the parts is not reused at all when it was released in 1987 all the parts as you can see here is not reused so that's a really good thing all the parts are unique to the gyro viper it, himself very nice and the details is quite nicely done the head itself as you can see he's wearing this well semi full face mask in each side of the ear itself there's a bit of a bump probably because due to, to due to the ears itself got a nicer details on the back as well probably the zip the zipper itself that goes from here all the way to the back the mouth itself has been covered but there's a bit of a detail there most probably some sort of a well mouth mask there the face has been exposed with the nose there and the eyes half the face has been exposed very nicely done we have the shoulder pads here which is in purple the straps as well got a zipper going on from this section that goes all the way down here very nicely done nice little details on the side and also to the back as well you got tubings that goes from the back all the way to the lower arms there you got the gloves there as well gun holster on one side of the tie but there is no gun accessory which is a sad thing back portion of the butt here there are two red tubings as well one side of the leg here you got a smaller map lower legs here what's interesting to note that they place the knife sheath inside the leg rather than outside of the leg because of the tubing there again we have a knife sheath and a gun mold here a gun holster mold but he doesn't come with any accessory of weapons for this figure so it's a really sad thing now what's nice about this mold is that as you can see he does wear some sort of a very baggy suit because there's a lot of wrinkles going on very nice there's a lot of nice wrinkles there it goes all the way to the bottom even at the back there there's a lot of nice wrinkles as well very nice nice little detail but the colors is well it's all right now let's take a look at the figure's articulation the head can actually go back a little bit forward side to side as you can see that now the torso is made of an o-ring joint it's a o-ring rubber band that hooks onto the torso and at the bottom the hook for the hip joints itself so you can only turn left and right and back forward or side to side what you cannot do is you cannot twist the torso 360 degrees otherwise you'll snap the o-ring shoulder joints here can turn 360 degrees as you can see here can also lift the arms this high elbow joint here that bends this far and turn 360 degrees no wrist joints and hip joints here can move forward side a little bit 
thanks to the mold itself making it a bit bulky it kind of bend back because it also has a really big butt as well knee joint that bends this far and that's about it for his articulation now let's fully equip his accessory as you can see it's rather tight and there you have it the gyro viper Overall, the figure is okay with the helmet on. Now, what's interesting to note that the figure's head is purple, but in the Marvel comics, his head, the face mask itself, is actually in brown. So, I rather wish it's brown rather than purple because the purple looks kind of odd. But the the colors is okay. It's not that bad. So, if I'm gonna give a rating for the Gyro Viper itself, despite the lacking of accessories and the very tight helmet that scrapes the nose paint job I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10 yes 6 out of 10 for the gyro viper next up we'll take a look at the Cobra Mamba be right back and we're back and this time we'll take a look at the Cobra Mamba now I have to apologize for the video itself because the camera is panned all the way back and you get to see the background on the edges of the well, video itself because the Cobra Mamba is absolutely very long as you can see that it's absolutely crazy long itself sheer size of it speaking of the size let's do some size comparison with the Gyro Viper as you can see itself it's massively long very nice now let's take a look at the colors being applied onto the vehicle itself now bear in mind this is a 1987 vehicle toy so there's absolutely no paint job involved for this entire Cobra Mamba everything you see here is just purely plastic material color but there's actually quite a number of variety of colors here for this entire Cobra Mamba which is very nice now the body itself is actually made of a purple plastic material color very nice now the small little scalp ports here or escape ports here the rotor blades the engine covers the back exhaust pipes there the fins at the back are all made of a black plastic material color the engines here for the rotors each of the rotors is actually made of a light gray little bit bluish plastic material color I'm not gonna well count anything inside the Cobra Mamba because that's all the mechanism that's actually white plastic and grey plastic and what so not inside the Cobra Mamba itself now the hatches as you can see for all three of the cockpits are made of a dark red clear translucent plastic now for the rest of the parts are all well red plus plastic material color for the pegs here that connect to the blades four of the missiles here there are two on one side a bomb on one side there's another bomb on the other side as well a larger bomb in the middle the knob at the bottom the tap here the machine guns or laser guns at the ports there and four smaller missiles located under the well the escape ports there or the smaller light at attack points all made of a red plastic material color very nice now let's take a close look at the details of the Cobra Mamba first things first let's take a look at the rotors I'm gonna detach the rotors because it's gonna be annoying and they just flop around all over the place I'm gonna put it on the back this is the rotor blade itself as you can see the details is quite nicely done there's rivets in the middle here very nice a lot of pistons very nice details even at the bottom there's also details as well they don't need to do that but they well they did it anyway very nice and that's just the rotor blades then we'll take a look at the body for the Cobra Mamba as you can see there's a lot of nice details there very nicely done a lot of wirings, tubings, panelings very nice got the engine cover on the top here which you can remove like so the bottom section of the engine cover here we have more details for the engines itself very nicely done 
superbly well molded also the engine details for the rotors itself very nicely done the back portion of the Cobra Mamba we have four exhaust pipes very nice and then the back portion here more panelings I got the fins at the back more details in the back section of the fins very nicely done now for the cockpit there's the smaller attack pots here there's also details as well inside the cockpit each side of the armrest actually has a bit of details like buttons there as well it's not really a seating area more like to the well you basically place the figure flat out just sleeping in the cockpit itself there's a smaller peg there to plug in onto the back of the figure nice little details now for the main cockpit as you can see there's a sitting also you basically just lay the figure inside not really sitting down anyway very nice details there there's a lot of wirings as well and buttons now let's take a look at the bottom section of the Cobra Mamba now the details is not as much compared to the top but there's still some as you can see this is the knob that turns the rotor blades this is to release the when you push this tab down it releases the larger bomb here but yeah, as you can see there's a nice little details there especially on the escape port section get to see the engines there as you can see the rocket exhaust port at the back more details underneath the light attack points more details on the laser guns or machine guns whatever you want to call it very nicely done on the other side more panelings very nice a lot of nice details for the Cobra Mamba here very nice I'm gonna place this back first Now, I'm not going to attach the rotor blades first. I'm going to show you what sort of accessories that the Cobra Mamba actually has. Now, the Cobra Mamba actually have four of these missiles, these harpoon missiles, which you can actually, as you can see, they actually have small little slots here, a small little empty slot here. You can place it onto the tab here. So there are two per side of the Cobra Mamba. So two missiles on one side, two on the other side. Here we have a bomb, as you can see here. There's also another bomb on the other side. Here is a, well, a very simple, very crude way to release the bomb. There's a small little tab here. When you push it, you're supposed to, well, as you can see how the mechanism works. And when you push it, this goes down and then actually, well, push the bomb down and drops it but for my version it's a bit too tight for the peg so it doesn't really let loose as you can see there so there's a, two of the bombs one bomb per side and then we have a larger bomb here as you can see so when you press this it will drop down the larger bomb as you can see there's also a hole here I'm not too sure where it's supposed to slot there's also more details underneath there very nice so in order to load it just place it like so and for the attack parts there are two smaller missiles as you can see tap underneath the attack parts itself two small missiles per attack parts making this entire vehicle a lot of firepower you have four machine guns or four laser guns there one large bomb two medium sized bombs four large missiles and four smaller missiles it's basically a gunship which is very nice there's a lot of firepower but in the Marvel comics they are easily beaten down by the Cobra Rattlers because they are slow they are not as maneuverable and not as fast compared to the Rattlers of course now the another feature for the 
Cobra Mamba itself is that you can actually detach the attack points by pushing it down like so. As you can see, this is how it looks like for the attack point. Two fins per side. You got a rocket at the back here. More engine details here. Very nicely done. And all you have to do is just slide it in. As you can see, this is where this is the, the end of the exhaust port and you're supposed to slide in on this section here where I'm pointing and then once you align it properly just snap it back in like so very nice now I'm going to demonstrate the rotors right now so I'm going to put in the blades back to where it belongs to so we have two rotor blades there and most people have this question you have two rotor blades how does it spin i mean would it block each other hinder each other the way it's designed is that i'm gonna tilt it in this angle as you can see both of the rotor blades there are a bit angled down so when it turns both of them turn at the same time and it won't hit each other well at least a little bit so this top knob at the bottom here actually turns the rotor blade as you can see for my Cobra Mamba, it's a bit loose, but it still turns, as you can see now. Very nice. One thing I really wanted to question is that, how does it, well, control its balance without spinning around? Because it doesn't have any tail rotors. It only has two main rotors there. Probably one of the things that in the G.I. Joe universe, things that don't make any much sense there, so I don't try to question it that much. So you have these two rotors that spins around, very nicely done, a lot of nice details, a lot of nice colors, despite that it's, well, main body itself is purple, but there's a lot of firepower, a lot of firepower. Now, I'm gonna move this on one side. Let's try to put in the Jar Viper into the main cockpit. Now, this cockpit here it opens up from the from the top like so and as you can see it just popped out but for the main cockpit it opens to the side so let's place in the gyro viper in like so The problem with the main cockpit is it's quite small and tight. So even with the vintage figure, it is quite tight to place him in and have the hatch actually fully closed in. But there you have it. It's sitting inside, which is a bit tight. I'm gonna put this one side. Now, in your mind right now, you're all asking, does it fit? the 25th or the 30th anniversary figures yes and no it really depends on the figures now I have next to me a Firefly figure for the Rise of Cobra line where you can buy the Rise of Cobra gunship it comes along with the Firefly with the web gear and the helmet now does it look similarly like the Jar Viper or even better yet if you want to do comparison, as you can see the image, the helmet does do resemble this figure's accessory here, the helmet itself. Originally, Hasbro wanted to place this figure as Wild Weasel, but decided to, well, forget about it and place it as Firefly instead. Now, Despite that it does look like the Gyro Viper with the helmet itself, the problem with this figure is that because this is Firefly figure, the cut onto the hips itself, he cannot actually bend his hips all the way because you can bend it, but it just spreads the leg way too far apart. So because of the main cockpit being so tight, as already demonstrated by putting the original Gyro Viper in, and he cannot actually sit in quite well. Despite that I already placed it some, something like this without his legs being 
widen up so much there is no way for you to place this figure all the way in this is the maximum out input for the figure itself because due to the legs itself but other figures with proper cuts on the hip joints can fit in so I'm just gonna remove the accessory for this figure first pop the vest off and remove the entire web gear off and figures that actually can fit the Riso Cobra Mars Troopers or any figure that is a bit shorter because if you compare the length of the Firefly figure I'm going to put back the head in as you can see the Firefly figure is way too tall this one is a bit short so it fits well so let's put this guy in with this web gear besides it's at least it's brown and not grey so it's almost there almost okay it's too far off anyways for the colors but you get my meaning so here we have it see he can actually fit all the way inside with no problem very nice very nicely done so if you have a Cobra Mamba if you want to fit in with the 25th or 30th anniversary figures just as long you don't pick figures that's a bit too long or have really limited cut space on the day crotch area there otherwise you cannot fit in the newer figures even the Strata Viper have a problem trying to well sit in because it has the same problem as this Firefly figure because the moment you have the legs all well fold up like this the legs will just spread apart so it will not fit in properly but it can fit in this longer smaller attack parts so if I'm gonna give a rating on the Cobra Mamba itself the vehicle is very intimidating first of all I love the sh size of it the size is really long plus the fact that it has a lot of weapons a lot of missiles a lot of bombs a lot of guns then it has a couple of gimmicks one you can actually detach the attack parts two of them of course and also you can actually play around with the rotors but it really depends whether or not the rotors still function or not depending on the seller in eBay and also another gimmick by dropping the bombs itself well some of the bombs don't drop but at least the big one the one in the middle drops quite nice there's a lot of nice details a lot of nice details for the mold itself so I'm gonna give a rating on this I would say that the colors is a little bit off but I really like it so I'm gonna give it a nice a very nice 8 out of 10 yes 8 out of 10 for the Cobra Mamba yes because the thing the problem with the Cobra Mamba is that it always have this problem with the rotors itself the rotors is going to be a problem whether it, whether or not it's gonna work or not is an, an issue but there's also another problem with the rotor blades itself because over time it will just droop if you not if you do not take care of it properly and if you have the sun well if you place it in some place where the sun kept on glaring onto the Cobra Mamba this thing will just droop so you have to really take care of it but otherwise this vehicle is very nice so 8 out of 10 for the Cobra Mamba I thank you all for watching this is Lucy05 and I'm signing off